if I can reflect back on your 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 days of owning your club and stuff, what what made for uh, a, an ideal client, someone who worked, and what made for an op, uh, a challenge? What was a challenging person, or the some of the pr- key characteristics of, of a person who was in resistance? Let's start with the person in resistance that you were struggling with, and let's then let's ask about a, a perfect client. Um, the the person I was. The type of client that I would struggle with is someone who wasn't honest, uh, honest with themselves, honest with me and their approach, the kind of person that would uh, come to me at the end of the week, not see a change in their how their clothes fit or what the scale said and say, I'm doing everything that you said uh, I should be doing. I'm following everything to a, to the T and how come I'm not getting results? Uh and, and then hear from their spouse or sister or whatever that, oh, but what about that ice cream you had the other night? Well, I just had a tiny bit. Or what about that, that chocolate bar? Well, it was just a mini chocolate bar. Well, they didn't tell me they had that. They said they, were, they followed everything to a T. And it's, I mean, I, I mean, yeah, it impacts me because I want to see people get results. I'm, I'm training them not necessarily for the dollar. I, I mean, their results is an impact on the work that I do. If they're not getting results... What's that say about me? So uh, it's just very upsetting when someone's not honest with me, but it's even worse when they're not honest with themselves. So they're partially not willing to take some personal responsibility for uh, the actions that they're taking and, and what led them up to that point. So uh, the people who are dishonest were probably the, the hardest well, to work with. I love that answer. So I'm going to interrupt you and run with that one for a second because – I think what you hit on is is dead center at the problem that people have with with getting themselves in shape. I mean, I, I just you know it's you, what you hit was such a core fundamental piece, which is personal responsibility and personal accountability. Because you can't do anything with that. You as a trainer, I can't do it. I can't give anybody a course. Now, I think there's two things that happen here. I think some of those people, and you you, I'm sure you can affirm this. I think some of those people actually believe they're doing it right. Right? They do. Yes. They really think, well, I'm nailing it. I'm nailing it. And they don't see the other things they're doing. I mean, and this happens in all areas of our lives. I mean, there's upper limits, things we do to hold ourselves back and self-sabotage pieces because we don't. We have some struggle with success. And those are psychological barriers, but those things occur. But the fundamental aspect of not being able to, to be honest. And now, we just came off a dialogue where we talked about the 12-day reboot. And it was, I love the guy Dave from Santa Fe. Yes. Who said it took me four day four weeks to do a twelve day base camp reboot because I screwed it up once or twice and every time I did just like you said Sean I started over and I go I go I go dude there you go that's that's it because you were honest with yourself nobody had to police you you had an inner dialogue you found a positive way to go oh man slipped up gonna step and do this again now that guy's an ideal candidate he's yeah. gonna he's gonna find his way because it's not about perfection. But, you know, if, if you could come, if I could come to you at the end of the week, if anybody could come to me at the end of the week and say, you know, I did eight things right and two things wrong, then we're dealing with reality. Right. We, exactly. can, we can do that all day long, right? We can fix that. Yeah. We, we can find a way, but we can't fix things when we can't deal with reality. Now, on the, on the I don't know I'm sabotaging myself model, I mean, that's kind of what I also, and I hate to go back to the 12-day base camp all the time, but it's on my mind and... As you know, part of the whole base camp thing is I'm getting this junk out of people's lives, right? Add it, add a full strength, get junk out of their life, and get the sugars. I'm getting all the hidden sugars out. And what happens is you can tell. I mean, I've seen this a thousand times. I tell people to get get change their diet this way, but if you don't specifically ask them to get specific foods like the breads out of their diet and things that like milk that would have lactose, which is a sugar in it. If you don't get the sugar truly out of their life, they, they'll be eating what they think is a 98% clean diet, and they're somewhere in the 56 range. Right. And they don't even know it because they've ingrained these patterns of eating foods that they, they completely have no memory of even taking in. Exactly. You know? So, and that's where a food journal comes in. So, I mean, those things are – but I think – I just I – I'm sorry to run with that one, but I love that one because, you know, I mean, you can, you can literally stop there. It's either – it's either you, you, you're taking personal responsibility and accountability or you're not. And if you're not, how do we work from that? Exactly. Exactly. You can't. 
it, it, you really, uh, it's a, it's a constant struggle if you, uh, yeah, if you don't want to be accountable for your actions and accept that, because everything, I mean, that's, uh, to me, that's the fundamental of, fundamentals of progress is to, to really look at your feedback loop. And I'm constantly looking at my feedback loop. And if I didn't progress the way I wanted, I can guarantee, I can look back through my journals and go, here it is. This is the thing that changed. This is the thing that's different. What can I do to improve it? And then I progress from there. But if you're not going to be honest about how you got to this point right now, you're going to be constantly guessing what you need to do to get to the next level. So it, all, it really starts with that honesty and, and personal responsibility. It's an increasing degree of guessing. An increasing degree of guessing just gets it's more and more crude. And, and I mean, that's I mean, I, I, I love that takeaway. Now, 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 I'll say I'll go further and I'll say that people that are living, you know, just outside of personal accountability. I won't say living wrong, just living outside of the, their own really taking personal accountability are also those prone to find a guru, follow a diet for a while, make the diet fail, make the guru bad, then find a new guru and a new diet, and then the cycle continues. Exactly. exactly. I fall in love with somebody, you know, my plastic dashboard, Jesus of Fitness, and then I fall out of love with him and I fall in love with the new one. Yeah, I, exactly. I've, I've been stating that. Uh, I tend to state that in the beginning of, of a lot of my programs is that uh, I really encourage them to to work the program. And you brought it up today in the conversation uh, with the 12 day reboot about um, shit, just lost my, my train of thought there for a second. But uh, you can make a bad program work as long as you put the, the focus and intention, yeah. the good intentions towards a bad program and follow it through. You can make a terrible program work, but if you don't apply yourself and commit yourself to even the best of programs, they're all yeah. going to fail. And it's not the program that failed; it's you that failed the program. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I really encourage people. It's, it's to ultimately, you're the, you're you're the key variable. Right. You're going to make it work or not work, and then that falls into something I posted the other day on Facebook, which was you know when 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 we become victims of the food, when we make the food the reason why we are as a society overweight. We have created a victim state in ourselves, and we're, we're now powerless. Food is food. We, we have to eat it. We choose. Now, it doesn't mean there isn't more addictive and there isn't tricks and there isn't all these things. But from a perspective standpoint, we have to see it less as a powerful source over us. It's like I say, you know, McDonald's didn't cause obesity. They, they, you know, they're simply producing the foods that we're choosing to eat. Exactly. You know? Man. Change, yeah. change the way we eat, we change McDonald's. This is, this is exactly it. It's, it's powering. People may listen to us talking about how you have to take personal responsibility and be honest with yourself. They may see that, well, it's almost uh, like a, a scolding thing or, or whatever. But the really thing is when you take personal, responsi personal responsibility and you're honest with yourself, it's probably the most empowering thing that you yeah. can do for yourself because you realize now, hey, I – I'm the one who got myself to this point. Is my my actions, my thoughts, whatever it was. I got myself here. If you got yourself here, you have the power to take yourself to wherever you want to go. You're in charge. You're in control. Uh, so personal responsibility is the most empowering gift that you can uh, give to yourself. Well, and exactly. And when when you're outside of that, and when you're out there struggling, you're in the you're in the, the zone of fear. And when you're in fear, you're out of your power and, and source. And so if you can bring yourself back to, to the truth because at the truth lies all your freedom, strength, and potential. So get back to the core truth. Find it, whatever it is. It's the old golf thing. Play it where it lies and from there you can move, but you can't play it from somewhere it's not. You can't hit the ball when you're 10 yards away from it. Exactly. Exactly. So, and, so true. And it, yeah, and I like your piece about, you know, it's not about scolding. It's about, it's about empowering. It's about urging people to step back into position of power to commit to something and, and just be up and up with it, you know? <laughs>